Okay, hi everyone. Um, my name is Sean Fitzpatrick. I'm at the University of Lethbridge, which is in Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. And I'm recording a series of videos that are based on the Apex Calculus textbooks um, in principle so that they could be included in, uh, in an HTML version of the book. Uh, so we begin with limits and um, just an introduction to the topic of limits. And before we, before we get into limits, generally we can look at just an overview of, well, what is, what's going on when we do calculus? So there is a number of ways that you could describe the subject of calculus. Uh, one of the ways that you might characterize a lot of what's going on in calculus is that this is sort of, well, it's an art of, well, let's call it exact approximation. Okay, um, so two of the, the things that come up in your first course in calculus, calculus one, you usually um, look at, you look at limits, and then once you've done limits, you move on to derivatives and then to integrals, right? And when you're looking at derivatives, well, with derivatives, you're looking at an instantaneous rate of change, okay? Uh, when you're looking at integrals, integrals have something to do with area, okay? And you know, when we think of area, we probably think, well, what are some of the area formulas that everyone knows? You know about areas for circles, for rectangles, triangles, probably not too much beyond that. Um, but when you're doing integration, you want to be doing area for sort of, you know, in a, in a very general sense, right? For, for any sort of region that you could describe that's bounded by curves, you would like to be able to come up with the area, describe the area of that region, okay? Um, so how do, you, how do you approximate these things, right? So um, with derivatives, with instantaneous rate of change, you can approximate by an average rate, right? So if you're thinking about something like, like distance, velocity, for example, um, right, velocity is distance traveled divided by the time it took you to travel that distance, right? <coughs> And so that works if you're going from point A to point B, you know how far apart they were, you know how long it took you, you can calculate your average speed over that trip, right? Um, but that's not the same as the speed that displays on your, the speedometer in your car at any given time, right? That's your speed at one moment in time, and it might change from one second to the next, right? So how do you calculate that instantaneous speed? Well, you can think about doing average speed over shorter and shorter and shorter intervals of time and see what sort of value you get, right? Similarly, when you're moving to something like area, right, you've got, let's say, some, some curve in the plane, and you want to calculate the area under this curve. Well, you probably don't have a formula for that area. Uh, and you say, so what are the things I do have formulas for? Well, I know how to calculate the area of a rectangle. And so what you might do is you might start trying to sort of fill the region with rectangles, right? That sort of approximate the area to a reasonable degree, right? And you can count up the areas of those rectangles, and that's going to give you some approximation for the area, right? It's not exact. Um, but it gives you some rough idea. And so what do you, one of the things you'll do in calculus, you'll talk about how do you improve that approximation. Well, we'll see that you improve the approximation by increasing the number of rectangles, right? Now, as the number of rectangles goes up, you're, you're, you're not changing the area. So the number of rectangles is going to increase. It means the size of the rectangles is going to decrease. And so at some point, you know, your ideal approximation comes when you're adding up in some sense infinitely many rectangles of infinitely small area and trying to come up with the result, right? Um, so that's not something that you can, you can do without tools of calculus, without limits, okay? So, so the limit 
which, which seems a little bit awkward at first. It seems uh, you'll be wondering when you're first learning limits, you'll be wondering why does anyone bother? Um, and the reason we bother is that it lets us develop these concepts that come later on, like derivatives and integrals, right? Um, the limit is the tool that allows you to take an approximation and make it exact, right? Without a limit, all you have is the approximation. Um, and, and there are some areas in calculus, right, and some practical situations where maybe all you can get is the approximation. And there are situations that you will encounter maybe in your second course in calculus where that's the case. Uh, and, and for a lot of those scenarios, what you do, uh, there may still be limits involved, but what you can do is you can start talking about how can I figure out the error in my approximation. And calculus will also provide you with tools um, on how to actually get a very good idea of how far off you are on a given approximation. Figure out what sort of a maximum error that you might have, right? So if we can't make it exact, we make it approximate, and we try to make that approximate as good as we can, and we try to make sure that we know how far off we are. Um, so all of these will come up as you proceed through, through calculus. Um, but uh, we've got to start somewhere. And since limits are this key tool for doing everything that comes up in the first, your first calculus course, limits is where we begin.